Good afternoon, uh, commissioners and um, guests of the public forum. Uh, my name is Eddie Pearce of Lifeblood Australia. Firstly, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, past, present and future, and also for thanking you for uh, having me here today and giving me this uh, opportunity. When speaking on a topic, it's good to know that the speaker has lived experience and therefore knowledge with the topic they are speaking on. So I say, my name is Eddie Pearce. Since 2012, I've been employed as a correctional officer and also part of that time working as an activities officer. My wife and I have operated our own pest management business since 1997. And I'm a boiler maker by trade. I was brought up on a sugarcane farm in the Burdekin. My father passed away in June 2007. In 2015, I was presented with the book Bloodline, the story of John Turnipseed, a former gang leader and drug dealer, who now is a community leader, pastor, speaker, facilitator, and has written parenting curriculum. John ran the biggest gang in Minnesota history the National Guard were brought in to disband the gang. John has lived experience. Come 2019, I've been given the position of Lifeblood Coordinator for Lifeblood Australia. Lifeblood Australia is facilitating the Lifeblood curriculum and coordinating the establishment of other facilitators to facilitate Lifeblood. I'm currently part, part way through the first Lifeblood curriculum to be facilitated in the community. Our goal is to establish partnerships throughout not just Queensland, but Australia with correctional services, probation and parole, and other service providers to inmates or those who have gotten out on parole, and to give every individual who comes into the corrective services system the opportunity to partake in the lifeblood curriculum and turn their life around. So just summing up the, um, the uh, commissions or inquiries uh, findings at this point in time, uh, imprisonment rates are rising despite falls in crime rates, prisons are overcrowded, compromising safety and rehabilitation methods, prisons are expensive, it costs around $107,000 a year to house a prisoner. And just to add to that, guesstimate wise, you could add probably another thirty to fifty thousand dollars to that with the family related issues that come attached to that particular person. There is little evidence that the increasing use of imprisonment benefits the community. High rates of reoffending are compromising community safety. On current trends, investments of five point two to six point five billion will be required to ensure that prison capacity is able to meet demand in 2025. We can't keep building prisons and locking our problems away. It's like a person pushing their problems under the carpet, so to speak, and hoping the problems just go away. This very rarely happens. After being in the system for the time that I have, and now with my position with lifeblood, it is very clear to me that the root cause of society and community dysfunction as we know it is fatherlessness and the lack of positive and encouraging mentors. That now I don't have a father, I have a little understanding of what fatherlessness looks like, but certainly not the same experience as some of those who have or are incarcerated. Drugs, alcohol, sex, food, anger, fighting, whatever it might be, are all the end result of a dysfunctional upbringing. A child without a father is like a building without a roof. Unless there is a paradigm shift in our thinking to embrace a compassionate approach, nothing will change. Unless we love the unlovable and get to the root cause of dysfunction, we will spend a lot of money plugging holes. Lived experience is part, or lived experience as part of the solution. Last year, I was uh, fortunate enough to attend the 14th National Reintegration Puzzle Conference, where it was identified that people with lived experience need to be part of the rehabilitation solution. 
In support of this, I'll only mention a, a couple of points here, but in 2015, a lady by the name of Claire Seppings, a Churchill Fellow, carried out a study on the rehabilitative role of ex-prisoners, offenders as peer mentors in re reintegration models in the UK, Republic of Ireland, Sweden and USA. I'll just mention a couple of these points here in her uh, conclusion, if I uh, uh, might commissioners, I might add this particular report to the submission. So. Claire says, my study, my project set out to study the rehabilitative role of ex-prisoners offenders as peer mentors in reintegration models, UK, Republic of Ireland, Sweden and the United States of America. I succeeded in that and found so much more. So, just a couple of the things. Successful reformed offenders driven by their lived experiences to develop and lead their own agencies and services, employ former convicted persons and work with prison and probation systems to deliver person-centred services. We will not reduce crime unless we deal with the us versus them culture and division. I was saying to a couple of people a little bit earlier, I mean, when we were a child, I'm sure there's most of us that, that weren't perfect and we've all done something wrong in our lives and uh, because we were a, a bad boy or a bad girl at a young age, we weren't tarnished with that term for the rest of our lives. So uh, this is something that uh, goes against individuals when they're looking for jobs and so forth out in the, the community. Rehabilitation can only happen when in everyone in the criminal justice system shares responsibility for transforming the us-them culture into real collaboration. Peer mentoring makes sense. User voice or lived experience individuals input into research, policy development and service delivery makes sense. Removing criminal record barriers to mentoring and employment makes sense. I'll just go down to the last part of it here. But um, reducing crime and victims and creating an inclusive, healthy and, re and productive society requires whole of government leadership and will and community engagement and response, including the voice and expertise of service users, those closest to the problem, to help address the problem and help foster the leadership potential of those who want to change their lives for the better, make sense, and will bring about real reform. Oh, so I've got a note here, can a lawyer teach an individual how to be a baller maker or can a baller maker teach an individual how to be a lawyer? So using that lived experience is something that's coming from someone who knows the system. If they've turned their lives around, then it's very difficult to uh, debate someone's own personal testimony when they're trying to um, give you some good guidance. Lifeblood is a groundbreaking curriculum designed for life-changing transformation. Lifeblood is presented by individuals who have lived experience in incarceration and have turned their lives around. Currently there is a lifeblood for men and one for women. In the very first group of men that took part in the first lifeblood curriculum was my son but at the time was 16 years old. I noticed that he gained great insight, knowledge and maturity from going through the curriculum. So I know that Lifeblood will be beneficial for youth as well. Lifeblood Australia envisages a holistic approach to reintegration so that recidivism and incarceration are avoided. We know that we need to walk alongside individuals for at least 12 months in some cases, it may be the rest of our lives, particularly until new skills become regular, everyday habits. The organisations I'm associated with have proven history of successes. John Turnipseed, who I mentioned before himself, up until recently, ran Urban Ventures Centre for Families. The goal of the Centre for Families is to provide services that equip and empower entire families to grow as individuals, 
overcome obstacles and support each other. A quote from a recent graduate said, I learned that it takes healthy co-parenting to have a stable environment for a child. Two working as one is better than one working as one. Urban Ventures provides cradle to career support for youth and families in one of Minneapolis's most under-resourced neighbourhoods. Since 2010, there have been 800 graduates a year from the Centre for Families. Of that number, 800 have gained full-time employment and are putting five to $10 million back into the US economy. And this is where we need to go. We need to be, rather than spending the money, we need to be able to have people to be able to put positively back into the community again. We all need mentors. It is like going through an apprenticeship, learning new skills until they become ingrained habits. A lot of the incarcerated individuals I speak to have a desire to do and be different, but don't have the faith in the current system, particularly for those who are repeat offenders. Most who have been in the system for at least 10 years recognise the dysfunctionality of their actions. Indiv individuals require their thoughts to be challenged. Lifeblood challenges, restores and transforms. Lifeblood is the key to a door to a different but fruitful perspective to living, including dealing with issues that come along. At Lifeblood Australia, we recognise that not every individual that goes through the Lifeblood curriculum will be transformed. But we do believe that the Lifeblood curriculum gives any individual the best available opportunity to understand themselves and choose the path to a life of fruitfulness. At Lifeblood Australia, we understand the need for training, reskilling, health, education, support, restoration and transformation. The model Lifeblood Australia follows is a tried and proven model. There needs to be great consideration for what outcome is desired, what steps are prepared to be taken. Outside the box, there are great alternatives. There is a great opportunity to restore our communities for the better. If you have less people going to prison, I'd suggest to you that we have a safer society and community. I've heard it said to have great community, we need to have great families. To have great families, we need to have great fathers and mentors. So that basically concludes my presentation. So again, I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, from my own personal assessment of what I've heard today, uh, the common thing that has come up is has been about getting to the root of the issues, because otherwise we're just going to be plugging holes. Uh, and from memory, I guess Shane was the last person that we heard, but you know, he talked about the community getting involved and and rather than just, you know, Queensland Correctional Services being the ones that sort of look after the prisoners and they're put in a box that no one really thinks about anymore because they're you know, they're over there and we're doing all right over here. Well, we need to take responsibility because us as a community have had some impact on the way that we're functioning out there. Mm. So we need to realise that as a whole rather than just letting, you know, correctional services or the police or whoever deal with it, you know. And at the end of the day, it starts first in the family. Shane, is the program, the Lifeblood program, a program that's run for prisoners while they're in prison? Uh, it, it is a program that that is done, yes. This is being presented. We don't have this being presented in any prisons right. at this point in time. Okay. Is that your ultimate goal? Absolutely. Okay. To, to be able to present this within the prison system and then also outside of the system. As I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, lifeblood is, is, is the key to a doorway to a different perspective on life. After that then comes walking alongside people and, you know, having a, a, 
a facility or partnering with a facility where people can learn skills. I guess one of the visions that I've been given is having a place where we restore things. So that could be a chair, it could be a mic, it could be a telephone. But with the theme of restoration in what you're doing, yeah. that's then working on your mind with restoration up here because the battle's all up here. Right. Would previous participants in the program ultimately then move on to become mentors? Yes, they have. Yes. Um, if I can just say that Lifeblood. in the United States, uh, Lifeblood is being facilitated in jails in Texas, Alabama, Florida, Minneapolis. The ones that I can remember off the top of my head now, and, and it comes to mind that the fellow, the psychologist, talked about having a unit where uh, you, you had it as a, a, a sample unit for testing, I guess, some of these theories or, or programs. So in Alabama, there is a whole unit of 100 men that is a lifeblood unit only. And it is apparently, if, you know, if you want to see a, a, a unit that runs well, people getting on well together, uh, you know, in, end of the day, those individuals in a, in a positive uh, environment should come out of the system with a better attitude anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's something, because it's pre presented by, these guys with lived experience have done anything from assault to murder. So we're not just talking about people that have done simple stuff, if you want to put it. So, you know, and they're talking on, on subjects like family, power, loyalty, the right thing, transformation, because, you know, what might be the, the right thing for me might be a different right thing for you. Yep. So One of the issues we've come across is that sometimes some of these programs that, are, that have been available previously in in Queensland correctional facilities take longer than the average sentence these days, which is the average sentence is relatively short, 3.9 months or something like that. Mm. How long does the formal program take? Uh, 12 weeks. It can be done in six weeks, okay. Okay. but 12 weeks is the, right. the standard. And, and I know that I'm not Indigenous, um, I'm just a Anglo-Saxon Celtic guy. Is this program, will it cross-cultural boundaries. It's come from the US to Australia, so it's already mm -hmm. crossed one boundary. Is sure. It, is it applicable for Indigenous Queenslanders? Well, when you say, yeah, well, yes. Uh, in the United States, when, when you talk about individuals that are going through the curriculum, you know, you've got Latinos, African Americans, your uh, white individuals. So uh, the evidence uh, would say that it can work in, in, with different cultural groups. Absolutely. Absolutely. I personally have had interaction with some of the um, Islanders and, and Murrays out at the jail. Mm -hmm. And uh, my passion and, and desire is also motivated by the response given by these guys when they, they agree wholeheartedly with, with everything here, you know. Um, there's a couple of the bloodline books that are going around in the jail and one of uh, the individuals that I've spoken to recently, uh, he said to me that he's read lots of other books similar, but this one he never put down and he's someone that's been in and out of incarceration since he was probably nine or ten years old mm -hmm. and he said the bloodline book read almost you know, word for word, like his life. And I guess a lot of them, like some of us in some situations outside, we feel like that we're the only person in the world that has this issue or whatever. So when you find out there's other people that have had a similar problem yeah. and they've been able to get through it and come out the other side a little bit shinier, uh, that's encouraging. That gives you hope. Eddie, what would a next step be for you with this program? What, what, you know, if you, if, if there was a next logical step to move forward, what would it look like for you? Uh, that, that, that would look like being able to partner with corrective services 
uh, such that they would allow uh, lifeblood to be facilitated within the system and uh, you know probation and parole would would come in line with with that as well so uh, uh, but as I mentioned earlier I mean any of the services whereby individuals are dealing with people who have been in incarceration mm -hmm. Even for someone who hasn't been in incarceration and, and maybe just wants to get a bit of a guideline as to what uh, traits make up for a more fruitful life and not a destructive life. Yeah. I hear you loud clear. Yeah. Um, Eddie, thanks for that presentation and hearing about the program. Interested in um, how many people are in the organisation here in, locally yeah. and also in Australia? So here in this region and then in Australia, like has it taken up, has it got traction elsewhere? Uh, it, it, to answer the first question, here in um, Cairns. in Cairns or in north, far north Queensland, there are Levi Meadows who was here a little earlier uh, he's part of the, the board of Lifeblood Australia. Um, uh, ben is one of my uh, students, let's say. Um, and I have about another two other guys up in the tablelands that are, that are part of the board. Yeah. We have been finding it uh, challenging to break ground. Yeah. But... I guess you would say, like, I don't get paid for doing anything that I do. So this is purely just run on passion and and the understanding that from the interaction that I've had with individuals, that this hits a point and that there is a desire out there for something outside the square. Mm. Uh, Has it got... Um, is Lifeblood, are you the contact for the US here or is there other groups in no, the I'm, country, I'm, Australia? I'm the, I'm, I'm the only contact in Australia. In, in Australia. And uh, we had one of the guys from the States come out last year and I coordinated what was called a, a Man Up conference up in the Tablelands. But at this point in time, I have a um, manager of offender development in another jail in Queensland that's looking over this particular lifeblood information and a chaplain in uh, another jail down south is actually going to and, and approaching uh, management about lifeblood curriculum so that's where well, that it's sounds, standing that this, sounds positive yeah. yeah look it's 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 something that I guess if you believe in something and that the, uh, the there's, there's integrity behind it that the outcomes that are looking at being achieved by uh, going through the curriculum are all for the benefit of the individual going through that, you know, they should walk out that door a lot better off than when they walked in. Uh, I feel good about that. Uh, so... Yep. Have any of the team here at all managed, uh, been able to travel to the USA to see how it works then? No, that's, that's my next... Okay. Next... Uh, uh, plan or next step in the in, in the plan is to be able to go yeah. over there. Yeah. I, I've got you, you can go onto the internet and Google lifeblood curriculum or five stone media and You will come across uh, Considerable amounts of information on this particular curriculum and also the one for the women uh, interestingly enough the one for the women uh, the face for that is Sheila Charles, so you'd all know Ray Charles, the pianist. So he was a, a um, heavy, uh, I think it was heroin user. Right. His daughter spent 10 years incarcerated because of, of drugs and turned her life around. Unfortunately, she passed away 18 months ago from the, the drug use. But her testimony alone is just insanely powerful mm. uh, so um, you know I don't know just like when you can 
present something to somebody who's, who's walked in possibly going, oh, you know, yeah, this is another curriculum mm. or whatever, yeah. and, and then get interaction from individuals on the very first meeting because I understand in the prison system some of the, the, the guys there it might take them six weeks before they start interacting with a facilitator, you know. And this just, it opens stuff up that other things don't and, and call me arrogant, but, you know, as far as I'm aware, there's no other program going in Australia for that matter. And that it is or has been put together in such a polished and professional manner, uh, yeah, it just speaks for itself. I wish you well, Eddie. It sounds like it's a very interesting um, program. Thank Thanks, you. Eddie. I'm going to open it up for any questions from the floor. Um, people got any questions? Girls? Mm. All right. So, Eddie, thank you for your time this afternoon thank you. for presenting. And um, we do have, yeah, those links will probably follow up anyway yeah, to yeah. have a look ourselves at that program in more detail through sure. the US connection. So, if you can make sure that Matt gets those, I'd be very much. Uh, interested in following that up yes. to have a look at what mm. evaluation has been undertaken of the program. Yeah, yeah. for sure, for okay. sure. Thank you. Thank you yes, very much. It sounds very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. So that brings us to an end. Yep. So Mr. just um, in conclusion, now that's the last presentation for today.